Hey y'all, what's up? Big Willie here, and welcome back to episode 14 of our FTB Skies Expert Let's Play. So I know I've been talking about automating a lot of things here recently, and that we were going to set up our diesel generator, and we're going to get to it. However, I've got to do something about storage. It's been driving me crazy, and I've really had the access to it since we got our lava, I think, is where the hang-up was. I'm not real sure. But we're going to get into that today. So without any further ado, let's get into it. All right, so I've got my handy dandy clipboard. I've decided I'm just going to start adding things to it rather than trying to have an idea for like a whole episode because sometimes you get through things quicker and other times it takes longer. But at the top right there, we're going to finally make the storage lectern that it mentioned in the getting started quest line when we did some Ars Nouveau stuff. Where was it? Was it? No, it was in the Ars quest line. It's over here. So let's head over to Ars Nouveau. You'll see I went ahead and made the ritual bra brazier. We need that for making our storage lectern. And so I've gone ahead and prepared the things we need for our storage lectern. We need to get a bookworm charm, which uh, summons a book bookworm. We do that, as you can see, by augmenting a ritual of awakening with a book and quill. Then it's going to summon a bunch of these for us, ever how many we can augment it with, and I'm going to see how many we can augment it with. And then we're going to get one set up. Because this is searchable, craftable, I'll be able to do away with that little awkward grid, and the next thing on the list I have is a storage controller. I'm going to be able to attach my storage controller to it also. So, let's go check the don't get distracted woolly chest and see what all I've got in here. So I've got everything for our ritual right here, and then this is to craft the lectern. So let's go ahead and just craft our lectern, which is done. Is that in the enchanting apparatus or yeah. Okay. So it's over here. So we get our two chests, a gold chest, the insightful crystal, which the only thing that was hard was the bottle of enchanting, but you can just use any of your fluid transfer method, grab some XP out of your, um, XP crystal, and then you can bottle it up in the, 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 the doohickey, that machine right there, the super cooler. So for this one, we're going to just clear off this and put these here. And then we're going to put a chest and two chests and the insightful crystal and the lectern. Gonna pull source that it needs from these nearby source jars. Ta-da! And this is gonna be our ticket to some much needed searchable storage. But in order to get that searchable storage, we are going to need to perform a ritual. So we need the ritual bra brazier, whatever you call it, bra brazier, I don't know, however you say it. And then we need to right click in our ritual and it's waiting on us to right click it with an empty hand but we can throw in these books and quills. I don't know how many it will allow us to augment. I'm going to just four, five. Will it let me go six? Cool. Will it let me go seven? Wow. Okay. And so then we right click it and it should give us seven of the bookworm charms. There we have it. So these bookworm charms, these are going to be what actually allow us to link storages to our storage lectern. So, and I don't know where this chocolate pie came from. Don't look at me. Okay, I like chocolate pie. It, it, it was a quest reward and I just put it there. All right, so now <laughs> I would like to actually move some of these chests around. Uh, but I'm not going to make you guys watch that whole thing. What I will do is I will set this up. And then come up with a spot for it. As a matter of fact, since this is uh, the storage spot, I'm going to put it directly in the middle of the room right here. And if you just right click your bookworms onto it, these will each allow you to add, I believe it is four, but don't quote me on that, storages per. 
And so now if we... There we go. Shift right click the storage to here. And we're going to be able to link all of these inventories to it. And then I'm going to break this uh, crafting station, as we no longer need it, to expose the chest down bottom. And now we should have six inventories linked to our storage lectern, which we can right click. And now our inventories are searchable. We can, if we need gold, for example, I can search gold and it will show me all of the gold. Woo! You have no idea how excited this makes me. I'm definitely going to be doing some rearranging of Aww. this part of the base, because as you can see, I was just running completely out of storage in these, and I was just trying my best to get by until we could get to some form of storage. But the other one's still a little ways away from occultism needing to go, if I was going to go that route for it, and this one works better with our existing inventories. So that's going to bring us to the next thing on our clipboard, which by the way, I am literally just about out of storage, but I should be able to now is, oh, it's not JEI synced. I wonder if there's a way to turn on JEI sync. Let's see. Non-synced search, synced search. Yes. All right. So gold chests. Oh my gosh. It's like we've, we've moved into the 21st century of modded Minecraft. Thank you. All right. So the gold chest we're going to make an iron one first which is fine if i can learn to click we're gonna make another let's make a couple more just so we've got some space pull that out pull that out and now we have two more gold chests i am going to take these two more gold chests and we'll just go right there and right there shift right click Seven inventories. Eight inventories. Nice. So now we've got two more gold chests worth of space in our storage system here. And that is going to just make sure that we don't run out of uh, space before the end of today's episode as we work through things. I am going to keep the rest of these bookworm charms in my inventory for when we get this moved. So let's move on to the next thing on the clipboard. The next thing I have on the clipboard for us today, storage lectern. Oh my God, I want fireworks and explosions and rockets, rock and roll music, you know, Big Willie doing cartwheels. I, I'm so excited. A storage controller. Storage controller is gonna allow us to link all of these drawers and then I should be able to just use a singular bookworm to link to the storage controller and it will gain access to all of the drawers connected to that controller. So what does it take for us to make a storage controller? I know this isn't gonna be a straightforward process, but we do already have a configuration tool for locking. We will need to make our linking tool to link them. Um, I don't know what those are gonna cost us, but let's go start with the storage controller. How dare you? What? He's under the floor. That's cool, though. These could give us some water shards. And apparently slimes can spawn in a block and a half. Okay. Now, uh, let's go look at what all is needed for the storage controller. For the storage controller, we can pretty much make everything here. We'll need to make some gears, which we've not done, but we have our mechanical crafters set up over there. So making a few of those, a couple of those shouldn't be hard thing. We're going to need to get into overcharged iron which we make with the basic energizer here, which takes, uh, you know, stress units and turns it into energy. And then we can take uh, compressed iron ingots and turn them into overcharged iron, which then we're going to need to smash into sheets to be able to craft our controller. So let's go take a look at what it takes to make this. So this basic energizer is super simple. I think we might have everything we need to make it already in our storage. 
Now we don't have a lightning rod, but we got everything we need to make it. And then in our backpack, backpack I should have some andesite casings. And here we have it. So now we've got our basic energizer, but it doesn't do us any good if we don't have the compressed iron that it needs to transform for this here. So where can we get compressed iron? Are we gonna have to get into Pneumaticraft and build a basic pressure chamber? Yes, <laughs> yes we are. Uh, it's not gonna take us as long as you might think. So let's just bookmark these recipes and get going on it. So we're gonna need to make reinforced stone, which if you come over here to your quest book, Oh, always check your quest rewards just to make sure they're not something you need for the steps you're on. Those aren't, though. So, compressed iron, and then we are looking for our uh, quest line for that. I think it's right here. Reinforced stone. So, uh, it can be any stone, uh, but also serves as a crafting component for the pressure chamber. So, to make our reinforced stone, we're going to need other stone which is just stone thrown into the thing. And we're gonna need deep slate, which we can get deep slate by wrapping calcite around the one of these things, which we can get calcite if we don't have any by wrapping it around a manipulation essence. So I prepared in between episodes. So let's just try to make our uh, deep slate, which we don't have the calcite. We don't have the tough because the tough is tough's in a drawer right there. So we'll just grab us a stack of that out, toss it into our storage, and now we should be able to make our calcite. And then we should be able to make our deep slate. There's our deep slate. What next? So now we need other stone, which is just... Uh, andesite tossed into the thing so we can go to our upstairs and we can just take out a whole stack of andesite and we should be able to just toss them in there we have it and then the last thing we need is a sturdy sheet now the sturdy sheets are one of those ones where we have to reconfigure our little conveyor thing right to make them let's see sturdy sheet i should i knew i should have made a bunch of them when i made the first ones yep some, uh, lava smack smack on obsidian dust all right so give me just a moment to get that together and then we will proceed because you guys have seen me do all of that before okay so made us up a couple of the sturdy sheets i don't know if i have enough of this deep slate for everything we're going to need for the pressurized reaction chamber however i just want to go through the craft with you guys and then i can do the rest off camera to get the materials together so that we don't have to sit here and watch me do it but here we have it so in the enchanting apparatus you put your deep slate you put your other stone you put your sturdy sheet in the middle and presto now we have eight reinforced deep slate. Now, how much does the quest reward give us is the question. Does it give us any? Gives us four. Okay, so now in order to make the pressurized reaction chamber, we're gonna need 91 chamber walls, four glass, a valve, and two interfaces. Uh, 91 seems like a lot for a three by three. Are they having us build a five by five? Either way, uh, I'm gonna get all of this together, but there is the one thing that it looks like we'll need to show you. You need to make these into bricks, which is done just the same way you make most everything into a brick. So we just craft them here in our inventory to make them into bricks. And I think that's about all of the complicated parts of this. Uh, looks like it's just glass for that. So if you'll give me just a few minutes here, I'm going to go ahead and craft up all of these pieces for our pressurized reaction chamber. And uh, I will be right back for you. It'll be just a second. All right, so we're gonna need a little bit more deep slate. And I had been wanting to show this off. So if we take our, uh, there's all sorts of stuff you can do with elemental craft, and this is just one of them. 
if we take our element infuser and we take a pick and we put it in here, you're going to notice it giving a particle effect to that pickaxe. So that pickaxe is now, if we mouse over it, fire infused, auto smelt affected by fortune, which is not quite silk touch, but if we want more deep slate, it says if you go look at JEI, one of the methods to get deep slate is that you put a piece of deep slate down and you place a material generator pedestal on it. So the problem is going to be that if we do a material generator pedestal and we put a regular pick in there, let me put, we'll just toss my pick in there for now. You're going to notice that it's going to give us cobbled deep slate, which isn't what we want. This time we're going to put in the pickaxe with the auto smelt. And as you can see, it's giving us regular deep slate rather than the cobbled deep slate that our non-infused pickaxe was doing. So that is a good way to get around having to make the expensive silk touch books I was making uh, for over there. But it only works on stuff that's like need can be smelted back to its righteous form. So this is going to give us the deep slate we need for our conversion to get the rest of our pressurized reaction chamber walls going, but I figured I would just show you guys that in case you're struggling with enough source for your silk touch books or just wanted another way to get the whole blocks out of these pedestals. All right, y'all. Got everything together. I will say I am running out of room for all of the automation and whatnot. I am definitely going to need to do something about it uh, going forward. But for now, we're going to come down here into the bottom, which this is kind of what this is intended for. Uh, and we are going to make ourselves a spot to put in the... Compressor. Let's see if we can vein mine this without vein mining our island real quick. I mean, if I vein mine the whole island, at least you guys will get a good laugh. Let's see. Will it just do the stairs? Heck yeah. All right. So we don't need those stairs anymore. They were just temporary anyways. This iron chest we don't need. Cool. Gonna toss some things. We're gonna toss the things in this backpack so that they can get put in storage. All right. So we're gonna need one valve, even though it made four, which I didn't necessarily mean to make four. We're gonna need that. I went ahead uh, and made a rotational compressor. Um, the recipe for this is fairly simple. Pressure tubes, which we had to make for these pieces. It's all in JEI. Everything else you've seen me do uh, before. Maybe not the propeller, but it's just an andesite alloy with some iron, all things that we have. So let's build our first pressurized reaction chamber. We're gonna start with just the baby one because I don't know if I have enough blocks for the big boy. And uh, yeah, I don't necessarily need the big boy for right now. So three by three looks something like this. We definitely have enough blocks to probably do the five by five, but we don't need it. So we're gonna stick a piece of the glass on the front so we can kind of see in. And then this is one of the quirks of this mod pack. These blocks for getting in and out, they are placed based on the direction you're looking when you place them. So for example, if we want the interface to one to be in, one to be out, we actually have to get in the middle there so that you can see the yellow on the outside and the blue on the outside. And one of these is input and one of these is output. Looks like the yellow or orange is output and the blue side is going to be our input to get things in and out of our pressurized reaction chamber. Now we need a valve and this is to get our pressure into the chamber. And then the last thing we need is just that. And so now we have a pressurized reaction chamber, but we have no pressure to feed it. So we're gonna need to feed it some pressure. So for simplicity's sake, I'm gonna go ahead and put our diesel generator that we made last episode down here. And then we are going to put a shaft between it and this, although that is facing the wrong direction. Let me grab my create wrench. There we go. All right, so now we can stick a shaft. Mm. 
So there we have all of that. And now if we feed this thing our bucket of biodiesel, it should start running and generating pressure. I think that is the wrong direction. Let's see. Uh, the rotor suppressor is not rotating with enough speed. Okay, so we are going to have to step this up with some gears. Fair enough. So let's uh, let's see what we get here. We're gonna need a big one and a small one. Okay, let's see if this one is enough. So we need to put ourselves a block there. This machine would not work with the rotation in this direction. Okay. If I come to the other side, it should be rotating the other way. Sweet. So there's our pressure. And let's get it connected up. All right, so that's gonna take a second to fill up with pressure there. Let me go grab a lever real quick out of storage because that is how we're gonna be able to turn our compressor off and on. They react to redstone signal and a lever is one of the easiest ones for us to make. So now we should, just for demonstration purposes, if we put this redstone lever here and you flick it, that's gonna turn off your diesel generator. So that's kind of how we can control this. Uh, you could definitely automate that with other things. But as you can see right now, it's working on building pressure. We're up to 1.3 bar, which means we just need a couple, we need an input chest and an output chest. Looks like we have one iron chest on us that we got down here. So we could stick that there, and if we tossed in, I mean, we could toss in the whole stack. I don't think it's going to use them all. Oh, am I going to have to hopper? Okay. So let's grab a hopper. Cool, and we should be able to see our iron when it makes its little noise. It'll go... Suck it in, hopefully. Insert valid items in the chamber to be compressed so it doesn't like my iron. Not enough pressure. Oh. So maybe it'll do one better than it'll do a stack? sweet but it won't let me get them out dang it uh well actually i think it can output directly to a chest and the hopper has a buffer so i can just uh we'll do another one and there's our compressed iron We're gonna turn this off for a second. And then now we should be able to take our basic energizer, put it there. And it looks like it's probably gonna want a depot under it. There's our depot. This is my first time trying this. So let's make sure that this uh, works. What does it say? Overstressed. Okay, so if it's overstressed, let's, uh, let's, just take that out 
I have no idea how this works. Oh no, we ran out of biodiesel. We gotta go get more. All right, so I, uh, first time using this stuff, so I'm just trying to figure it out. I left this thing running the whole time and ran us out of biodiesel, so that's kind of a problem. But we needed to bring energy over here, so I just grabbed our energy cube we got from Quest Rewards way earlier, along with the flux duct to pipe in the power, make sure the interfaces were set to be able to output. And now, if we put that on there, there's a little laser beam, which it wasn't doing before. Hopefully that means we're going to get our overcharged doohickey. Ta-da! Overcharged iron. Three of them. Now, this is all temporary, but I am going to in between now that we've talked about, you know, we've talked plenty about this being the spot for our uh, automation stuff. We're going to need a couple of these diesel generators down here. We're going to need mixers. We're going to need all sorts of resources being piped into down here somehow. But we will be able to get it where we have a diesel generator down here that is making the biodiesel to run all of the other diesel generators. And then we will have a few of these diesel generators powering various machines. Because as you can see, they overload on stress units pretty quick at the... Uh, you know, 96, whatever speed that they're on. So we won't be able to run too many machines off of one individual generator, but as long as we get one of these set up to make the biodiesel for us, the net gains that you get from crafting the biodiesel are big enough that you can sustain three or four diesel generators off of one automated setup for biodiesel, which you guys have seen me make biodiesel. So I'm not going to make another video and all that. I'm just going to get it done and I can take you on a quick tour in the future. So now all we need to do for this, I think to get to our storage controller, which was the goal for today is we need to smash it and we need to make some steel gears. So I will meet you guys over at the mechanical crafters. All right, here we are at our mechanical crafters and it says the recipe should look just like this. And then we should just be able to turn it on. Let's go. It says just like this. And then There we go. All right, so rinse that and repeat. So it does need a redstone signal, I guess, because there's more crafters than there are uh, items for the recipe. So that redstone signal tells it to go with what it has. And we just got to lay it out right. Leave this orientation the same. Cool. All right, let's shut down this side. Hop over to the other, which I think there's a mimic over here. I saw one spawn. Yep. What'd we get? Uh, snorkel. I can breathe underwater. That, that is useful. Let's, let's put that in our backpack. All right, so we, last thing we need for our storage controller is to smash that overcharged iron. And now we should be able to wrap up today's episode with achieving the things that I wanted to achieve. So let's go in here and can you make me a storage controller now? No, because I need to make a bunch of other pieces for it. But thank God we have a searchable storage now. Uh, let's see, where is it? And then we need this and this. Yep. And that looked like we were going to need some other stone slabs. So let's uh, just make some of those. It's probably any slabs, but... Uh, nope, says other stone. And then these are, looks like any drawer. So let's just make some 
of whatever drawer we've got. Let's see, planks. What do we have for planks? We've got spruce. So, and how many chests do we have? Three. Okay, so let's make some spruce drawer. One, two, storage controller. Ta-da! I gotta quit saying ta-da. Please give me a linking thing with that. Please. Yes! Gives us the linking tool. All right, so from the way I understand this, we should be able to just put our storage controller down, link our tool, let's swap to multiple, and then we're gonna leave it on add, come over here, and that's gonna link all those drawers. We can do that. And that's going to link all those drawers. And then if we take our Dominion wand, and it is Aww. shift right click, shift right click, Aww. that should, in theory, allow us to see everything in those drawers. And I think one of the easiest ways will be, well, look right there, we can see it. All of our large quantity items from our storage controller, we can now see in here. This is going to be huge, huge for us. I'm going to rearrange and move all of this stuff in between episodes, but I wanted you guys to see that because now we can take and start automating things and piping them into our system using a few different methods. We can link additional storage ah. lecterns, from what I understand, to connect things that are farther apart than the bookworms will support. And we have a few other methods to link things up, but this is going to get us to the end of today's episode. I hope you guys have been able to follow along and enjoyed it. And to all of you new folks, because there's some of y'all joining in for this FTB Sky series. And let me tell you, as the kids say, I'm here for it. Welcome. I hope you guys are enjoying it. So go ahead and hit that like Aww. button. And if you haven't already, subscribe for future episodes. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.